Anastasia Anna Steele is a 22-year-old college student living with her wealthy best friend and roommate, Catherine Kate Cavanaugh. She is scheduled to interview the enigmatic CEO of Gray Enterprises. However, she gets the flu and sends Anna to Seattle to conduct the interview in her place. Anna is hesitant to go to Seattle for the interview, but she is thrilled to meet the handsome 27-year-old billionaire CEO, Christian Gray. The interview is somewhat awkward, with Anna feeling nervous and Christian being intense and arrogant in his answers. She learns some things about Christian, he is a control freak, adopted, and not gay. He even turned the table and started asking Anna about herself, feeling some attraction between them. After the interview, Christian sees Anna out to the elevators where they part ways. She can be seen taking a deep breath. Upon returning home, Kate asks about the interview and notices something different about Anna, who can't seem to get over Christian and still has him on her mind. Let's introduce Anna and Kate's friend, Jose Rodriguez, a photographer who harbors a crush on Anna, though she doesn't reciprocate his feelings. Later, Anna heads to her part-time job at Clayton's, a hardware store. She's taken aback when Christian walks in, explaining he's in town for business and needs various items like cable ties, duct tape, and rope. Despite feeling completely disarmed by Christian, Anna tries to maintain a professional demeanor as they exchange friendly conversation. However, the situation escalates when Paul, the son of Clayton's owner, enters the store and makes unwanted physical contact with Anna. Christian intervenes, giving Anna his business card but only for the photoshoot they discussed. The photoshoot proceeds smoothly, although he refrains from smiling. Afterward, Christian invites Anna to join him for coffee. During their coffee date, they delve into more personal topics, with Christian sharing about his family while Anna opens up about her mother and her late father. Christian also inquires about Anna's romantic life, asking if she's interested in Jose or Paul, both of whom she politely declines. Curious, Anna asks Christian if he has a girlfriend, to which he responds that he doesn't do relationships. As Christian walks Anna to his car, she narrowly avoids being hit by a cyclist. They share a hug, and Anna attempts to kiss him, but he rejects her, cautioning her to stay away and stating that he's not the right man for her. With heavy hearts, they part ways, leaving Anna feeling deeply hurt. After their final exam, Anna and Kate plan to celebrate that night at a bar. Unexpectedly, Anna receives a package from Christian, a first edition copy of Tess of the D'Urbervilles worth thousands of dollars. She wonders why he would send her such an expensive gift despite her rejection of him. At the bar, Anna gets very drunk and calls Christian to ask why he bought her those books. He is shocked to hear it from her and, worried about her drunkenness, tries to find out where she is. Feeling sick, she goes outside with Jose, who makes a pass at her. She declines, and Christian arrives to defuse the situation. Suddenly, Anna vomits, and Jose backs off towards the bar. Christian insists on taking Anna home. After saying goodbye to Elliot Gray, who is with him, dancing and courting Kate, Christian approaches Anna on the dance floor to take her home, but she faints. At the Heathman Hotel, Anna wakes up in Christian's room. Christian assures her that nothing happened but changes her clothes because she had vomit on them. They discuss her future plans to apply for internships and move to Seattle after graduation. She tries to tease him into making a move, but he clearly states that he won't do anything without written consent. Intrigued, Anna accepts this. They leave the hotel, and despite no paperwork yet, they share a passionate kiss in the elevator. Christian takes her home, and she is surprised to find Elliot and Kate having fun. Anna tells Kate how things seem to be progressing with Christian. That night, after work, Christian picks her up in his private helicopter, Charlie Tango, and they fly to Seattle. They arrive at his apartment building, Escala, where he has her sign a non-disclosure agreement, NDA, to prevent her from telling anyone about what he will show or tell her. She asked Christian if, should she agree, would he make love to her, and he said he doesn't make love, but hard. He took her to a room in his apartment and told her she could leave at any time if she felt scared of what he would show her. She insisted on seeing what was inside the room, so they entered and found it full of all sorts of toys and bondage gear. Christian explained that he is a dominant and wants Anna to be as submissive. If any rules are broken, she would be punished. Anna was shocked by all this, however, she didn't leave. She admitted that she is a virgin, which surprised Christian, noticing she was biting her lips. After things heated up, he invited her and took her to his bedroom to baptize her. He started undressing her, and they engaged in having fun. As things heated up, they started to enjoy themselves and ultimately pleasured each other. She thoroughly enjoyed every moment of it. After a while, she approached him and wanted to have another round. The next morning, 
Anna prepares breakfast for her and Christian thinking about everything that happened. And noticed Anna's vitality because of being watered. Christian accompanied her and encouraged her to eat all the food. They bathed together and caress. While warming up again, they suddenly heard a voice outside the room, which turned out to be Christian's mother, Dr. Grace Gray. After getting dressed, Christian happily introduces Grace to Anna, who is happy to meet her. After a short conversation, Grace leaves. They left with his Audi R8 Spider to return to Anna's place. On the way, they stop and they talk about his past and he reveals that he had an affair with his mother's friend when he was 15 years old and was submissive for six years. Anna is upset that Christian was abused as a teenager, but he doesn't see that. Christian takes Anna home. He gives Anna the contract and urges her to read it carefully and research it on the internet. And they agree to meet again on Wednesday. Kate is eager to know the details about Anna's first experience. Anna admits she's not sure about their future and says Christian is complicated. After avoiding, he took out the contract and read it. The contract is very businesslike and outlines all the rules Anna must follow, all the actions they can take, which can be discussed, and exactly what the dom and the sub expect. Later that night, Anna and Christian exchange some flirty emails and then Anna begins her internet research about the BDSM. The next day, as a reminder of how delightful it was to know him, he tied it to his bed using the same grey necktie and was blindfolded by her t-shirt. Afterward, they enjoyed themselves and entertained each other. Later, he admitted that he had enjoyed it, while she began to fall in love with him. However, he refused to touch by her. Despite Anna's efforts to persuade him, he didn't sleep with anyone, so he just left. The following day, Anna went to Christian's office for the contract signing. She wanted to clarify more about the content and wanted to change some terms and conditions. She also considered using rope, tape, and cable ties. After they reached an agreement, they began to talk about an intimate scene, until they both got turned. Because Anna wanted to review and contemplate the contract before she finally signed it, she then left. On graduation day, her stepfather, Ray, arrived to attend the significant event in her life. While Christian was speaking, two female students were discussing his attractiveness, but Anna insisted that he was gay. He spoke to help eradicate hunger and poverty worldwide, a message he heard from Anna in an interview. Diplomas were handed out, during which Christian and Anna exchanged brief remarks about his ignoring her emails, which puzzled him. Afterwards, Kate decided to introduce Christian to Ray as Anna's boyfriend, which Anna was embarrassed about, yet Christian went along with it. That evening, they went to Escala to celebrate the occasion. Later on, Christian showed Anna an expensive gift, a car. She hesitated to accept it because she already had a car, but Christian already sold it. After rolling her eyes, she received punishment from him, and they kissed. Upon leaving, Anna received a call from her mother, Carla, apologizing for not being able to attend her graduation. She also learned about her new boyfriend from Ray. Anna cried over the complications in her love life. This led to Carla inviting Anna to visit Georgia to discuss this matter, and Anna promised to do so. On Sunday, Anna headed to Escala. Upon arrival, Anna showed him a photo they took as a couple during graduation in the Seattle Times, with a caption stating friends. For a moment, they both want to entertain each other. As things heated up, he wanted to take Anna to his playroom. Despite not yet signing the contract, he called it due diligence, and she agreed. He switched to dominant mode and began giving her orders on how she should behave. Her hair had to be tied back, and she was not allowed to wear anything except her panties as she knelt by the door until he instructed her further. After teasing with a riding crop, he bound her to the ceiling, and they started to enjoy each other's company until they were both entertained. After indulging themselves, she felt tired, and he took her to his bed. After a little rest, they prepared to go to Christian's parents' house for dinner. There, she met Christian's father, Carrot Gray, a lawyer, and Mia Gray who had just returned from Paris. Kate and Elliot were also present. There, she revealed to the family that she planned to go to Georgia for a few days to see her mother, which Christian clearly did not appreciate. During dinner, Christian carefully caressed Anna's thigh under the table. He said he wanted to show Anna the backyard and they left the dining room together, with Christian carrying her to the boathouse. Christian was angry that she didn't tell him about going to Georgia, and he said, you're mine. But Anna was somewhat confused. She asked why they couldn't sleep together and why she couldn't hold him. Always thinking about the contract. She knew he would be angry, but she pleaded and slowly cupped his face, initiating a tender romantic kiss. As she boarded the plane, Anna discovered that Christian had upgraded her ticket to first class. Upon arriving home, she was warmly welcomed by her mother and happily engaged in conversation at the dinner table. 
In her bed, she missed Christian, who was having dinner with Mrs. Robinson, which angered her. The next day, at the restaurant, Anna wanted to talk about Christian, but they were surprised to see Christian standing beside them. He came to explain that Mrs. Robinson was just a friend. After they reconciled, they decided to hang out and boarded a plane, where they both enjoyed themselves. This surprised Anna because she knew Christian wasn't romantic. After seeking advice from her mother, she said goodbye to her and flew back to Seattle. Upon arrival, Taylor was waiting for her at the Seattle airport to escort her to Escala. She asked how Christian was, and he said he was preoccupied. She arrives at Christian's apartment, where he immediately hugged her, as things getting steamy, he took her to his playroom to tie her up, and blindfold her. After spanking her, he goes down on her and tried to entertain her. Eventually, after sleeping, Anna saw Christian playing a melancholic tune on his piano. Knowing that he started playing when he was six years old to please his new parents. He ignores her, but she just wanted to talk. They discussed the contract she hadn't signed yet, and Christian said the contract was somewhat outdated at this point. Anna asked Christian to clarify what he meant, and he said he wanted Anna to obey the rules at all times, and he would punish her if she violated any of them. Anna asked why he wanted to punish her, but that's just the way he was. Because he's 50 shades of gray. Because of this, Anna wanted to witness it, she wanted to see how bad it was, because that was the only way she would understand what he meant. After that, Christian made sure that if she really wanted to do this, and she answered yes. They began the process, while he punished Anna, he also ordered her to count. When he tried to comfort her, she refused because she didn't like the way he was only seeking pleasure. Despite this, he still tried to coax Anna. But Anna no longer agreed for Christian to get close, and then she left. On the bed, Anna could be seen crying as Christian approached, wanting to apologize. Anna said she didn't want him to do those things to her, and it proved that she wasn't what Christian needed. But he insisted that Anna was everything to him. And she admitted that she had fallen in love with Christian, which he didn't like. This time, she wanted to leave her alone. The next day, she talked to Christian to bid farewell. Like their first meeting, Christian sees Anna out to the elevators where they part ways. And Anna went home carrying the heaviness of a wounded heart, reminiscing about the happy moments and the days she spent with Christian. Despite this, their world continued to turn even as their hearts suffered. For more videos similar to this, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications. Thank you for watching.